what a beautiful afternoon and most of all a good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of the game drive you have long been waiting for this is your game drive boys and girls i am sydney fumurani mikosi and i'm traveling with craig who is my camera operator this afternoon we are going to try by all means and get you see quite a lot of interesting animals you can talk to us uh, through your parents they can send us all your questions and comments on netjokies at wildearth.tv So my plan this afternoon is to go to one of the biggest water holes where I'm hoping to see some of the hippos and maybe some crocodiles. We might even see some predators coming to drink there. By the water holes, we just have to expect unexpected. So the sun is nice and hot at the moment. It's not windy at all, which is good to hear what is happening from the surrounding. So in order for me to get you see the animals, I must have to use my sense of smell. So I'm going to have to use my sense of smell, eyesight, and also trekking from the ground. So the bush is very much thick at the moment. <laughs> Laura, uh, my shirt is one of those very beautiful ones. You can see that it is an artificial leopard colors. So I am here to encourage people to rather use the artificial clothing of animals rather than killing these beautiful animals, which makes uh, this bush look very good. So the animals are responsible to shape the bush. So we have to look after them. <laughs> Carl Six, uh, me and you, we are together. I am looking for the dung beetles and it's a pity because I haven't seen dung beetles for the past four or five days. So today I am still looking for the dung beetles. I love dung beetles. So dung beetles, they are my favorite uh, animals, not just the insects. Remember, insects are part of the animals follow, falling under the animal kingdom. So when talking in terms of the dung beetles, you make me motivated. I love dung beetles. So dung beetles at this stage, they've got quite a lot of food to eat because the bush is green. Animals are feeding on this nutritious vegetation and they're getting quite a lot of nutritious food now. Soon as the bush starts to get dry, they are going to disappear and come again during the rainy season. I am not alone this afternoon looking for the animals for you to see. I have got a friend. Taylor is also searching for the interesting animals. Hello to all the hundreds of children that are watching us today on the Nat Geo Kids Show. I'm looking forward to answering all of your questions. My name is Taylor and on camera with me today is Senzo. And we are also going to be looking for wonderful animals just like Sydney. Now we are also driving around in South Africa in the Sabi sand. But Sydney's going all the way south it sounds like it. And I think Senzo and I will go a little bit further east. We might also go and tr check out some watering holes, but if Sydney is going to Chitwa Chitwa, it sounds like that's where he's going, he's going to the biggest one, then we will check some of the smaller ones to see what we can find. 
but we might have to see what other things we can find along the way. One of them is going to be a bird. Sorry, Senzo. Let's see if it stays. Hello, Tanya. And it's gone. That was a bird. You were hoping for a leopard, and I was just hoping to show you a Cape Glossy starling, but I can't even do that. So that was fun. Right, we'll keep looking to see what else we can find. Um, it's a bit hot for leopards now. We might find one, who knows. But I don't think that they're really going to be out and moving around because it is exceptionally hot today. Super, super hot. So they'll probably be lying in the shade or up in a marula tree fast asleep. If Sydney goes down towards Chitwa, uh, he might find Kuchava, my favorite leopard. She might still be in one of the marula trees. She likes it down there at the moment. Uh, we could possibly see on the side, maybe, who could we see? We could see Tandi, we could see her daughter, Tlalamba. No, we've got an impala. That's what I'm going to show you. It's, but it's also, right, it's going to be one of those afternoons, Senzo, where everything either flies or runs away from us. I'm going to start talking about plants soon because that'll be the only thing that can't get away from me. So sometimes the animals like to Wonderful. Sydney is indeed heading to Chitwa, so he's going to have lots of fun there. You're going to see so many animals with him. Hopefully he drives there quickly, because at this rate I'm not going to be able to show you anything. Let's see, there's a little watering hole coming up just around the corner. Maybe, just maybe, there will be something. Let us see. Nothing in that puddle. Nothing in the big puddle. Nope, I've got nothing to show you, unfortunately. Oh, look, wonderful. There's an impala. Are you also going to run away from us? Probably. Because I've stopped, and if Senzor Dare points the camera at an animal, it will disappear. No, it's too hot. This impala has decided to not run away from us, but to rather retreat in the shade of a guari tree. You're very clever. Senzo and I are now sitting out in the sun. Which is not very clever. We're perspiring. Awesome. Let's keep going, Senzo. Let's see if we can find other wonderful things. Hmm. I'll also check the ground for some tracks to see if any leopards or lions or cheetah, wild dogs, anything interesting has crossed the road or if we pick up on some fresh elephant tracks I'll probably try and follow them we shall keep going oh lots of birds out they're also sitting in the shade today they're not very impressed with the heat maybe we'll be lucky enough and we'll see some some birds bathing in the water that could be an ex exciting thing to watch. Here is some more mud wallows, I suppose, coming up. Maybe there'll be some birds drinking from here. Nope. See, this is a good one. Oh, there's a dove, though. It looks like there's a laughing dove under the shade of a tree. Maybe it will come out and drink. So there's one animal. Here it is. Waddling away from us, so not wanting to have anything. No, nah, it's not going to fly away. I thought it was actually going to fly away. Now it's just preening itself. I thought we would have seen more birds and things around the watering holes, but apparently that is not the case today. Okay, next, Senzo, we shall keep going. So that's going to be the theme of the drive. It's very hot. I don't think we'll see much for the first hour, but we'll keep on Looking, maybe we'll get lucky. Sydney's doing the same thing, and hopefully he's a little bit closer to Chitwa. So let me go and see by the water hole. Maybe because the sun is too hot, the animals might decide to go and quench their thirst today. So these animals, when it's hot like this, they also like to go and do the mud wallowing, where you will find them rolling in mud to try and use the mud as a sun uh, screen in order to protect sun cream to protect the skin
So we are not very far away from where the water hole is. In less than three minutes, we are going to be at the water hole. <laughs> Romit, that is quite a very uh, interesting question. When we are talking about the animal droppings, the animal dungs, they are always associated with the dung beetles and the flies. Earlier on, there was a question about uh, the dung beetles, if you will see them. So the dungs, they act as natural fertilizers. This bush that we are seeing here every day is not the bush that we are fertilizing ourselves. There are quite a lot of natural processes that are taking place here in order to have the grasses and the trees to grow. And these processes involve quite a lot of insects. Dung beetles, flies, they are part of those insects who are playing a very significant role in this ecology. So the dung beetles, they help because they, look at that, I've got something here in front. It was also leaving behind the droppings. We have just seen, can see I've got some impalas here. So I'm just going to pull forward a little bit so that I can improve this sighting. So we have got the impalas here, and one of the impalas, when I was explaining about the importance of having dung beetles and the importance of having dungs in the field, the impala was just demarcating a territory. So the droppings, animals also use them in order to communicate. And this communication takes place below our hearing. They come to a certain spot every time and excrete their droppings. And those droppings left there, they are there to send a message to the other animal of the same species. Because I saw the impala now now marking or leaving behind the droppings at the same spot, it means he is trying to communicate with the other impalas. If other impalas come there, they are going to sniff and they will know that this area has got an owner. There is quite a lot of ownerships here in the field. It's just that the ownerships in the field, they are regarded as territories. A territory is an area where a male together with a family stays in there and all the family members are protected by the male. Just like how we live, whereby we have got the head of the family and all other family members staying in the same stand. So it also happens here in the wild. So the dung beetles, they go to this territorial spot where the animals are depositing droppings. You will see them as well right on the spots, trying to get all the droppings so that they can bury them in order to lay their eggs. And suddenly the trees and the soil get benefit because the dung beetles are not aware that when they are rolling these uh, droppings in order to lay... They are going to aerate the soil. They will create the space within the soil for water to penetrate when it's raining. And they will also hide the ball under the ground, which will then get decomposed and become food for the soil. So the soil also needs to eat nutrients to support the vegetation. You can see that uh, the droppings and all these other small insects matters the most for us to enjoy the elephants for us to enjoy the lions and the leopards we have to look after the insects first because they are the ones who are shaping the soil they are the ones who are improving the soil for the elephants to eat what is it that the elephants gonna eat if the soil is not generating food in the form of plants so you can see it's very much important to look after nature as a whole. We don't have to be specific. We have to look after everything because they are interrelated. There is dependencies. They need each other. So we don't only have to protect the leopards and the lions and the elephants. We also have to protect the vegetation, the bush itself, and protect the soil against erosion. So erosion is the removal of the top layer of the soil. That part of the top layer is the one with a lot of nutrients which supports the seed's germination. So I'm just about now to get to the water hole as I indicated earlier. 
So, we, oh, there were some two doves. They just flew across here. <laughs> we were lucky to uh, have such a very warm the doves at the water hole. Remember, the doves, they are always a good sign of peace. So we are entering a very peaceful area. <laughs> So here in the wild, it is so interesting because it is pollution free. All I am smelling here now is just free pollution air. I didn't, I didn't copy the first animal which is, com which, which, uh, is compared to the impala as per the question. If you can repeat me, the animal, you're asking if the droppings are the same as the impalas. So the impalas that we saw just now... <laughs> the droppings of these impalas, uh, they, they smell the same from us, but from the animals, they smell different. When we smell them, we smell them uh, after they've been digested. And when they come out, we just pick up one similar smell. But if another impala comes there, this is quite a very lovely question. I'm very happy uh, for that question and I'm going to explain it broadly so that you understand. The animals, each one of them has got its own scent. So the animals can be able to identify each other from the droppings. Droppings can give an animal individual identity. So each one of them has got its own scent. That is why when the area is marked, the other one, when they come, they will do like this. And after that, they're going to do like... That is when they're doing something called flamen. It's also called to grammize. Uh, this is part of what is called altofactory communication. What is altofactory communication? It is a communication which takes place from the secretion of various skin glands, including droppings and urines. So from just sniffing the droppings, they can have individual identity and they can also know about each other's strength. They will know if this one is very strong, he's going to uh, fight me or defeat me from just the droppings. So now I have got something different from the impalas right in front of us. This animal is so lucky because it's enjoying this water by the water hole when it's too hot. The hippopotamus, they are so clever because they don't really come out during the day when it's too hot. When it's too hot, it's not time for them to feed. They will come out for feeding after dark. Amazing, isn't it? So you can see now the, all of them are just submerged there and sometimes they will go deep and again come out for breathing purposes. So hippopotamus and the impalas. MGN, the crocodiles, uh, we do have crocodiles here by this dam. It's just that the crocodiles and hippopotamus can be able to share the same area. I'm trying to look around here to see if I'm, I'm not going to pick up one or two because there's two big crocodiles residing here. But at the moment, I am not seeing any of them. But maybe before I leave here, I will show you the crocodile. So the crocodiles, uh, they, they do share this territory with the hippopotamus because they don't have same kind of of interest when it comes to competition on diet. The hippopotamus are grazers. They eat grass. The hippopotamus, they leave these water holes at night and travel long distances in search of food. Whereas crocodiles are carnivores. They wait here for the other animals to come to drink and then catch them. That is a crocodile, yes. Congratulations for spotting that crocodile before me as I was explaining about the hippopotamus. But my camera operator managed to pick up the crocodile. That is the crocodile. 
you can see is hiding right there. And that head is slowly disappearing. So crocodiles can also submerge completely and hide underwater. So the male crocodiles, they've got short head. The females, they've got very uh, narrow head. So the males have got broad head, females have got a very thin head. So both male and female crocodiles are carnivores. They both feed on meat. They, they don't really go out and travel distances to go and catch something. The crocodiles are part of those called the seat and weight predators. While we are waiting to see what is going to happen here by this waterhole, maybe one of the crocodiles is going to show up by the, uh, by the island or by the bank. Let's go back to Taylor and see what she's up to at the moment. That crocodile got disappeared now. Well, that sounds very exciting. I hope that the crocodile does come all the way out the water. We checked the watering hole now and there was one bird at the dam. I thought we were going to find two hippos, but we didn't. So we've moved on to go and check the next watering hole. And I don't know which one we're going to go to yet, Senzo. I think we might go down to Twin Dams. We'll check down that side. Maybe we'll be lucky with a herd of elephants, or perhaps Sydney will be lucky. And a herd of elephants will come over the Chitwa Dam wall and down into the water and splash about. Because they like to keep nice and cool on hot days like this. And, well... I'm sure you all know what the best way is to keep cool, and that's to go swimming. David, if it was that easy to find lions, I'd hand them to you on a silver platter. But unfortunately, it's very difficult to find animals out here. The grass is very long, and like I said earlier, that the cats will be sleeping. So you will never see a lion or a leopard or a cheetah if they're laying flat in the tall, long grass. They will just completely vanish. So I promise we're not trying to hide any of the animals for you. We're trying to find them, but it's very, very difficult. Uh, and normally, they, you know, you have a better chance of finding them later on in the day when it cools down and they start to maybe move around. But right now, or if you've had them in the morning, if you found them in the morning, then you can go back to them. But unfortunately, I don't think there were any cats seen this morning. I don't actually know. I think it was very quiet. So we've got to start from scratch and and try and find them. So we're just checking watering holes now because it's, like I said, it's hot. Maybe the animals are thirsty and want to have a drink. So that's our best chance of finding them is going down to the watering holes and searching. So that's what we'll be doing. We're just gonna check every single watering hole, every mud wallow we can. And hopefully we'll be able to find something. We will see. Let's go down here. Lots of impala footprints. There's another watering hole. Looks like there was someone here though, Senzo. Can you see? See the wet patches just over... Where's my hand? There's my hand there. So I'm looking on the monitor. Somebody's come to drink water. Let's see who has come to drink water. Maybe an elephant. Hmm, I'm going to say that looks like a big elephant footprint. So there was an elephant. There might have been more elephants around here. And they came. And maybe they didn't even drink water. I think they just would have sprayed the mud all over their bodies to keep nice and cool. This isn't very nice drinking water. Senzo, is that a little terrapin on that rock to the left? Oh, my goodness. Look how tiny this thing is. Sure, that is so small. That is a terrapin, and that terrapin is smaller than, I don't know, I reckon it's probably the, the length of my index finger. It is tiny. It is so, so, so small. Maybe about the size of an acorn, but a bit bigger than an acorn. So that is not a tortoise. That is not a turtle. That is a terrapin. If we're from America, you call those big things snapping turtles. But in Africa, a turtle is something that lives in the ocean and has sort of flippers rather than 
the terrapins which have claws and stuff like that. They should see sins because there's some babblers that are coming out now too. There's some birds, there's some arrow marked babblers. Well, they're not hanging around. Let's see, they're very noisy birds. There's a whole flock of them in there. I think they were wanting to come out and drink water, but they've realized that we're here and they don't really want to come out while we're here. Lovely. Well, it was very... Oh, there. Woo! Well spotted, Senzo. That's pretty. That is a woodland kingfisher. And that's lovely. And then look, Senzo, down to the right. I love that tud, the dove that's sitting there too that you've also got in frame. So two birds just sitting there. Um, Senza, I, it was easy to spot the, the terrapin. Um, it was just sitting on the only little rock that's in this that's in this muddy sort of wallow. So it wasn't too difficult. That spot of the kingfisher was much more difficult. Well done, Senzo. So this is one of our migratory birds, so it doesn't live here. It uh, flies all around Africa and uh, just comes down for our summer. But it should go home soon, and then the bush will be very, very quiet without it. The dove, the dove lives here all the time. Yes, we're talking about you. They're all waiting their turn patiently to drink water, or maybe the wood, the kingfisher wanted to come down and try and catch, not that little terrapin. I think that terrapin would be very difficult for the kingfisher to eat, but maybe some tadpoles or some small fish, although they also like to eat insects. They actually love to eat insects. Very nice. So lots of things coming down at the water. Not a lion or a leopard, unfortunately, but like I said, a little bit later, we should see those wonderful animals. Okay. We will go to the next one, which is a fair distance away, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah, there's a family of elephants that came down to drink earlier. Rosalind, they kind of, terrapins just sort of use hippos as like a rock, like a sunbathing spot for no particular reason. I mean, I've sometimes seen terrapins trying to feast on ticks and other sorts of parasites that uh, live on hippos and buffalo and rhino while they're in the water. But, um, you know, it's not very often. And then what you can also see is the terrapin sitting on an animal's back. If they've got a big wound, if they've got a big injury that's open, they'll often peck away at, like, the dead flesh and, and sort of fester it. But normally when you see hippos and terrapins together, it's because the terrapins are using them as a, um, like the beach, really, They're just sunbathing, or like that little rock that we saw uh, with the terrapin on top, just a spot to get the sun. And then it's nice because then they move from point A to point B. Sorry, so it's also a jumping stick there. <laughs> stick whacked the side of the car. Oh, it's a pity we didn't see that herd of elephants. It looks like we're looking at the footprints. There were lots of little babies in the herd. But maybe we'll see some more. But it might have been much earlier during the day. Well, so the reason why the kingfishers' beaks are so big in comparison to the size of their body is because they use their beaks like a spear. So if they're catching fish, they need to spear into the fish. They'll sit on a branch and they'll perch themselves. And then when they see something, they and they dive into the water. And that's the best way to do it. So it's like a person that goes spear fishing. The same thing. That's what their beak is like. The end of the... Um, Sorry, something has bitten me on my arm. Anyways, so then you get the other, well, the woodland kingfisher and the other types of kingfishers that catch insects. It's just easier for them to catch a nice big beak. It's amazing that they can use it so well because that beak on that bun is almost the same size as the whole bird. Okay, we're going to keep looking around here. This is hopefully going to be a nice area for some more animals. Sydney has not left Chitwadam. He's still watching the hippos. What we are seeing there now is called a school of the hippopotamus. A group of hippopotamus together. Oh, one of them, look, is trying to display their biting water. Sometimes this can serve as very good signals when the hippopotamus are not happy with something. They start displaying their aggressive behavior when biting the water. 
But at the moment, nothing is happening. They are very much happy with our presence and they're not going to give us any kind of display at the moment. But if any other animal come here to try and challenge them, it's when you will see. So the hippopotamus, the reason why they've got to spend much time in water is that, oh look, <laughs> they are playing, I can see some of them are swimming. They are lacking of the sweat glands. So when coming out of the water hole, they experience a lot of sunburn. But they do have something called the subcutaneous gland, which helps them, but it's not enough for them uh, to survive in these very hot weathers. So I can see that this is quite a very big family. There's only a few far away from where we are seeing these ones, but a lot of them, they are right in the center. But as you can see, one of them is busy turning and uh, swimming there. That is one of the big ones. So these animals can be able to see underwater. <laughs> Rosinda, the hippopotamus, they, 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 when you are seeing them like this, you must know that it means they are on the ground. So that is why they cannot be able to drown because they walk on the ground. Hippopotamus cannot swim nicely. All they can do is to run underwater. So they can be able to get to the bottom of this water and they don't get drowned because if you check at the arrangement of their nostrils or the nose, you will see they are very high up so that when they go down, if they cannot hold the breath anymore, they just got to come out after five to six minutes and breathe and then go down. Look at that. Look at that. That is amazing. So this kind of animals, uh, they cannot easily get drowned. And we are talking about the hippopotamus who grew up here by the very same water holes. So they are very much well experienced. So they can be able to see as well nicely because if you look at the structure of the eyes, they, they do have a membrane which protect the eyes from this water. It's called the nectating membrane. So the nectating membrane helps the outer layers of the eyes on these animals in order to survive. Uh, Polly, I didn't get your question very nicely. I just said, asking if the hippos are related to any other animal. I am not too sure if uh, the hippos and the manatees are closely related. So on that one, I've got to uh, do some research and come back to you before the end of this show. I will be telling you uh, if there is uh, indeed a close relationship between those two or not. So you can see that uh, there where we are seeing now, not all these hippos are adults. There are some little ones there. I can see when they are raising up their head that the big ones are playing together with the little ones, which is good because when these animals are playing is when they are also learning uh, some of the skills, survival skills. Uh, Roman, the oldest hippo I have seen here, or the biggest hippo I have seen here, is uh, Scuba Steve. One of the hippos that we are seeing uh, alone, which is now having a friend, but he does spend most of the time just walking by uh, by himself. So, But now I saw that he's got a friend. I haven't seen him for a while now. He is so very much 
old. But if I see him today, I will show you and I will remind you this is the scuba Steve I was talking about. So, Mike, uh, underwater, the, the eyesight is not that perfect. Yes, as I indicated that they do have the nectating membrane, which helps them when they're underwater. But here outside water is where they've got a very good wide vision. So they cannot see for a long distance. So sometimes you can find these hippopotamus very close to the crocodiles and crocodiles not even moving at all. So them and these crocodiles who are staying here, they, they are used to each other and crocodiles don't mind hippos and hippos I saw that they are also very much ignorant to the crocodiles. The crocodiles and the alligators, if you look, the alligators, they look much more bigger than the crocodiles. Crocodiles in size, they look very much small. So the alligators, they look much bigger than our crocodiles. So we don't have alligators here. We only got crocodiles. So I'm just going to pull forward and see if we cannot find any of these uh, uh, predators here, the crocodiles. But there is an impala coming to drink here, I can see now. There is an impala, I just want to show you, it's coming to drink. You can see these animals, they come and drink here and not very far away from where that impala is, is where we saw a crocodile earlier on. So let's see what is going to happen there. The crocodile is going to uh, drink just now. So you can see that these animals, such as impalas, they, they are finding it very hard sometimes because they must have to drink here where there is crocodiles. And when coming here, they also pass some other predators such as leopards and sometimes even lions. So this impala is just by himself. Normally, you will see them coming down here as a head. So you can see it's very much hot because mostly these animals, they come to drink in the morning and also late afternoon. But late afternoon, you will see them coming here in big groups. So it is very much difficult to survive in the wild. You can see this impala is drinking and is observing all the time. So you can see now that the impala is now listening and observing. It's very important to come down here and do a thorough inspection before they touch the water. So I'm going to try and, and uh, check around here and see if I cannot find you the big crocodile outside the water hole. We might be lucky. So now let's uh, go back to Taylor, who is also still searching. So, 
we are going to head down towards the gate so to get into this wilderness area you have to drive through a really big boom gate and there's security and there's dogs that come and sniff your car to make sure you're not bringing any illegal things in or trying to take any illegal things out and then that's because it sounded like someone that was driving in one of the lovely ladies that work for wild earth saw lions so how crazy is that so i don't know how many or who it is we're very far away though we're about i don't know 20 minutes drive or so away maybe if i push it i probably won't push it a little bit but about 20 minutes or so and um, we'll eventually get down that side and hopefully i'll be able to show you them if they're still there because they could be moving but I don't know very much information. So we're basically going to drive in that direction. And unless we see something spectacular along the way, we're probably just going to keep going because you've heard it's quite a long, 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 long way to go. But we shall see. Ah, wonderful. That'll be very exciting. Hey, Senzel, when did you last see lions? You can't eat. Senzo can't. Oh, sorry, big bum. Senzo cannot even remember when he last saw lions. I can. It was a long time ago. Oh no, I saw some the other day. Uh, but I wasn't on drive. I was with some friends. So we'll hopefully. I don't even know what lions they could be. It could be any lions that have come from all over. So we will hopefully find out a little bit later. So we'll just keep driving for now and see how it goes. Maybe we bump into an elephant on the road. That would be very nice. They've been here today. Hmm. There's not even a cloud in the sky. Well, there's a few small ones. MG, no, don't, I only kick it into turbo for wild dogs, so no, we won't be kicking it in, in turbo. There's no need to Ferrari safari to some lions, because I don't think that they'll be doing much. I wasn't on safari this morning, so I wouldn't have even known where their tracks, you know, would have started from, so you kind of go out blind. Um, so, so yeah, so only time I'll... I'll really put foot and drive fairly quickly is for African wild dogs and that's because they run super super fast and literally within a blink of an eye they will leave the property but for other cats nah, it's Saturday just take it easy we get there when we get there but we are going in that direction I also don't want to miss a herd of elephants if there is a herd of elephants around because they're always entertaining so you've got to watch Oh, that was fantastic. What got me? I got hit by an insect. That's what did get me. I don't know what it was. A little click beetle. You should have to wear a shield mask. Carly, you would love to see the lions. Me too. They're my favorite cat. So we'll see if, if we can get there and hopefully find you some. It would be very nice to see them. Oh, lots of doves. Lots and lots of doves. Senzo, did you get hit by an insect yesterday? <laughs> okay, we'll go this way, I think. Down we go. Chris, sorry, I I actually just answered that question a moment ago. Um, my favorite animal is the lion. When Carly said that she loved lions, I then said that I loved lions too and that they're my favorite animal. So there we go. Just in case you didn't hear it, there is a second time. They are the coolest of the cats. It's 
nice and quiet out here today. Ooh, safari vehicle, yay! I don't know who this is. We're just gonna move off of the road for them just so that they can carry on past. Also want the dust to settle, otherwise the camera is gonna get completely covered um, in dust. Yeah, you see lots of us there. Because it's so dry, we haven't had rain in the last couple of days, which has been nice because it's very green. But then the dust is obviously more prominent and around and it gets in our eyes too hey Senzo it's not nice there we go all settled luckily we've got wind today that'll help blow everything away actually it's very windy Maybe it will stop blowing a little bit later. Since we haven't even I don't even know where all the animals have gone. We're not up here today, that's for sure. No wildebeest, no zebra, no impala, but they'll be here this evening where they always sleep. Oh, you can have one very quick look in the distance over there. There is a kudu bull, finally some life, but off you go to Sydney, who's driving, he's left Chitwa Dam. Maybe he'll find the coolest leopard of the Sabi sand, Kuchaba. I am now heading back towards the Juma side as I tried to check around that waterhole and I did not manage to see any of the crocodiles. So I want to go and see if maybe we cannot find something different. A cat will be interesting. Cat, I'm referring to those animals such as lions or leopards. I'm going to be checking for those animals back in Juma. So here on the ground, I haven't seen any of the convincing tracks on any of the cats. So the only animal I'm seeing that tracks the most on the ground is the uh, hyenas. Because the hyenas, they travel too much at night in search of food. Now that the sun is going to cool down, chances of sea. So in this area yesterday, I saw some tracks here for a leopard. Maybe those tracks where for a leopard which is still in the area now. So the animal... Apologies for the inconveniences we are experiencing some technical challenges. We'll be back soon.